temperature dependent sex determination is when the temperature that an egg is incubated at actually determines the sex of the organism. And so in humans, for example, if you have two X chromosomes, you become female. If you have an X and a Y, you become male. In species with TSD, they don't have sex chromosomes. And so it's the temperature that's triggering something and that something is what we're researching. We don't know, um, but temperature triggers whether that organism will become a male or a female. All alligators, crocodilians, some turtles, some lizards, all have um, temperature dependent sex determination. In most turtle species, warm temperatures, and warm being 31 degrees Celsius, produce females. Cool temperatures, which would be 26 degrees Celsius around there, produce males. And in the middle, you get a varying ratio of the two between those temperature spans. So we know what temperatures trigger male and female, but we don't know what temperature is actually doing inside the turtle. I examined a series of genes during embryonic development. What I wanted to know is what, what are the genes doing? What I did is I actually looked at five different genes in the exact same turtle. So what I was able to do is sort of a chronology of gene expression in each of these turtles, rather than um, what's classically done is you pool all the turtles together so you have a bunch of DNA from a bunch of different turtles and you look at that as one sample. In addition to the analysis of genes, is we also are interested in hormones, particularly estrogen. Previous studies have been able to apply estrogen at a male temperature and produce an ovary. So that's saying that estrogen can override a temperature signal. So I wanted to look at this study in terms of what it might be doing to the genes. However, when I applied estrogen, there was no gonad development at all. And that was the first time that this has been reported. So I think it's really interesting from an environmental standpoint with environmental estrogens as to what effect they might be having on gonad development in a, a natural population. So this summer what we wanted to do is look at another species. So last year I used red-eared slider turtles and applied estrogen. This summer uh, with my student Caitlin we collected painted turtle eggs and snapping turtle eggs from the Ashland area and applied estrogen to these as well. And it turns out we found very similar results. What interests me is that the estrogen prevented gonad development. Birth control, for one example, is ending up in our waterways. Turtles are living in these waters. Are we having a bigger effect on populations than, than we may think? I think the, the next sort of step or question is to look at wild populations, but turtles Turtles are hardy, so turtles will pretty much live anywhere. Um, but we don't necessarily know what's happening population-wise long-term. 